There's more to it than in the new UFC now, but um, um, the user drops some package in the package directory um, while node monitoring the package as the uh, yeah, node is it. And at the moment, it's uh, like this the package just directly uh, virtually extracts uh, the, the contents. But what has to happen, and that is not done yet, is that a package address uh, package first has to ask the package manager to demon whether ins or activating that package is a good idea. And um, the package management manager, uh, package management demon, um, then resolves the dependencies for the package and for all other installed package and sees if there are ever there are any clashes or if um, other dependencies have to be installed. And when it is done, and if uh, there is no problem, then there is no problem. But if other packages have to be installed or if there are clashes, then the package management team has to ask, 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 ask the user that uh, what to do. Like, um, hey, there are more, de more dependencies that need to be downloaded and so on. Um, do we want to do that? Yeah. And, uh, the package management team can solve all the dependencies and, and um, notify the package address what it really has to activate which packages. And once, once uh, the package address no, uh, knows that it can uh, really activate the package. Um, installation by a package manager uh, works a bit differently. The user asks the package manager in the GUI or the, the command line application to install the package. The package manager itself resolves the dependencies and can ask the user directly if there is anything to ask. Um, and then the package manager needs to uh, notify the demon that, it now, that there is now something to install. Basically so, basically, so there are no clashes, and the demon is confused because the package has uh, now sees new packages uh, appear in the, in the packages file and notifies the demon, and the demon do not know what, what happens. That's why the package manager first has to notify the demon. Then it uh, drops all the packages in the uh, ELS package, packages uh, in the packages directory in the corresponding one, and then notifies the package address. And uh, it just finally activates all the uh, packages that have been installed. Um, we will also su support the application bundles. Obviously, the self-contained zip files will continue to work. There's nothing to do about that. But we will also uh, support packages that are real hyperpack and hyperpackage format. And we attend to the or yeah. That was the idea at least that it will work uh, similar to what how, how it works on the network. You can just double click the, the package and it's either appears or even is uh, uh, started immediately. That obviously only works for us and that only works for self contained packages. And there's still the media to be that how that is uh, supposed to work, but that is going to work, and maybe the tracker uh, we need. It's with the tracker support, but well, we can do that. That's not a focus yet. We first want to get the uh, rest of the stuff to the hand first. But. <laughs> That's just an example of um, how our repositories and uh, work the way that they live and how we, we all set up look. But um, we will probably, as we already said, we have several repositories. One and the problem there really is that we need repositories for all the different versions of the code that are out there, like currently the release versions and the trunk version, and even for the trunk or the master version, there is uh, it keeps changing, like the work on the code, which means the change of uh, dynamic compatibility in some, in some ways. And so um, some of the uh, packages might have to be recombined. So uh, different well, states, different um, states of haiku may require different, uh, different versions of repositories. And this is what uh, the solution that we've come up with for that, which is like, here you see uh, a 
list of repositories for um, the release, well, the official release one, and the hex number that you see describes the um, dependency that the system itself has on, um, uh, on, on packages that it requires, like ICU, if ICU changes, we'd have to you know, uh, change, basically that number would change the identifier for the version of Haiku um, that uh, this system has now become a new Haiku subversion kind of, and, and we can, so it would require a new repository with all the uh, packages that match. And then the numbers below is just that um, packages, uh, whenever packages being updated, they end up in a new, um, in the next incarnation of the repository, like the repository kind of rolls along with the packages as they become available and will be compiled from my reports. And maybe at the later stage that will happen more or less automatically, of course. And each of these repository, well, the thing at the top is uh, really important. It's a hash file that is used by the package manager to determine um, what uh, repositories are actually available. And so the protocol between these two will be rather easy, like um, HTTP with the package manager just fetches that file with the uh, different uh, hashes and then it looks up the newest uh, repository itself that matches its own the Haiku that it's running on. Or the Haiku that it's building this uh, out of the build system. And um, then it downloads um, and checks if the, uh, the checksum it has for the most current repository matches the one it has already downloaded last time. If it doesn't, it downloads the new repository, and then that means it has to, uh, there are updates available, and it will tell the user. Then, and each repository refers to the actual package files, and the package manager will then just download the specific packages and install them in the process, just as the rest is. And important from the server point of view is we have a process uh, not somewhere running that builds the new repositories. And the thing is, we would like to add repositories in the current way. So but it's either they are completely or not at all. So that they can, because the protocol we're using is so simple, we do require that. So that we can Um, yeah, there are several issues, uh, issues that we have to overcome or we have to overcome. There's, um, because of the three different installation uh, locations, um, uh, there are a few problems with the uh, packages that have a natural pass combined into it. There are a few packages in there, so are not usually imported packages, no, almost uh, exclusively imported packages, uh, and sometimes um, combined things that absolute pass um, either to their own data or to other packages combined. Right. And that's often the problem if you have three different locations where you can install a single package, um, the absolute path combined in might not match anymore. Because, uh, Installed in a different uh, version than what it was built for. And we found a solution uh, that basically, basically goes like this you, um, for each package installed anywhere, there's um, um, a, direct, uh, a directory containing siblings um, in a fixed location. And I can show you this as well. Ah. Once it's in a Yeah, in the um, boot system, there's always a um, directory package links. And they see all packages, a uh, directory for all packages installed. 
and they also uh, each of the directories. Something that was interesting. Again. <laughs> ah, that's unfortunately not, not the latest version. Yeah. We'll see for, um, we won't yet declare all the all the dependencies, so we don't see anything here. Um, but that's kind of this one. Yeah, I should have, should have checked this on that first. Uh, anyway, each of these directories contains um, a symlink itself, which is uh, pointing to the installation location. In this, uh, uh, in this case, it's a uh, boot system. And it also contains a symlink for each dependency, uh, for each dependency that has declared. Uh, and the symlink uh, points to the actual installation location of the installed the dependency. So if you install, uh, for instance, um, as a version, it normally it normally has dependencies on uh, APR and with Neon and a whole lot of other stuff. And um, for all these dependencies, uh, the sibling goes to the uh, uh, right installation directory. And if you then decide to install a newer version, a version of APR, for instance, um, let's say it's come, uh, it's currently installed in Cal, and you install a newer version in um, in Home. And the sibling for the uh, see here is adjusted to the new version at home. And if there's a hard coded path um, in a build into the subversion, this hard coded path should not go to the um, installation location directly, but should uh, use um, the path to the package links directly. So if the path will always start with the system, um, package links, um, name of the package, and then the name of the dependency. And this, uh, this part never changes, um, as long as the package itself doesn't change. But the symbols uh, are dynamically adjusted depending on whether dependencies are installed. So although the path is still absolute and never changing, it will still work for the different uh, installation locations. Um, yeah, the boot process isn't so, so simple. Um, here's the old boot process to use the power tank boot. Um, you have your hard disk with partitions on it and an MBR. The MBR um, looks at the active partition or the MBR or, or um, there is a package and a bootloader and a menu order. And somehow the active uh, partition to boot is uh, selected and it starts with a sort of boot block for the uh, for the partition. And in case of our item, this, um, uh, this bootloader is our stage one bootloader. The stage one bootloader is only like 800 something um, uh, bytes long, or has, there isn't any more space. Uh, it, it knows enough uh, of the BFS uh, structures to find on the BFS partition the free bootloader. Uh, loaded into memory, and the reboot loader has a lot more knowledge. It really knows EFS, at least uh, remotely. And then the reboot loader, the stage reboot loader, uh, loads kernel and uh, kernel modules that are required for the kernel boot, and uh, uh, calls into the kernel, and the kernel takes over and uh, does the rest of the boot. The problem with package management, <coughs> at least if everything is packaged, including the Oh, this, this one, uh, 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 the problem with everything uh, thing is packaged is that the bootloader and kernel and kernel modules um, themselves are packaged too. Um, and the stage one bootloader would actually have to uh, not only know enough EFS, but also would not need to know um, the like, okay, package format and extract the free bootloader. And since it's only 800 and a bit uh, and a few a vice inside that can't really be done. <laughs> um, yes. You're just not trying. <laughs> yeah, I already tried pretty hard to get to the <laughs> support the uh, parameter to this uh, little space. Um, solutions 